Moore, the very best reviews. Tell them none can contest. We gon' What's good, everybody? Welcome to the show. I appreciate everybody for coming on through and watching the video and coming through to hear my breakdown and my review for the Shaq documentary on HBO, episode four, the finale. And uh, I got to say, it's a really good documentary. Episode four was excellent. Um, just like the rest of the other three episodes of this doc. And I think that Shaq had a lot of very good gems in, in this documentary. That's one thing. If you watch docs, if you really are paying attention and are really watching, the thing about docs is you can really learn a lot. Because it's real. They telling you real stuff. And it doesn't matter what kind of doc you watching. I watched a doc last night about the escape from Kabul, which is about when the United States forces pulled out of Afghanistan, the final days of what was going on. I mean, that was even good. I mean, when they put together a good documentary, you can really learn some stuff, see some stuff. I mean, it's it's just really good. It's not a movie. You know, movies are sensationalized sometimes. With that being said, the thing that I was talking about with bringing this about it being so good and real is that Sha Shaq talks a lot about the people that helped him get to where he is in life, the things that he did, the mistakes that he made, things that his father said to him that motivated him, encouraged him, things that his his mother said that encouraged and motivated him as well as other things. And uh, it's really good because you can look and see in your life, depending on what age you are, hey, if I'm going through this, that, or the other, hey, this could possibly happen or this is, you know, what I should expect. And so, uh, you know, it was a lot. And if you're young, now you can see that if you're older, middle age, you could say, hey, some of these things I went through similar um, and I have a similar understanding now or you know, that person went through some of the same things. And now I see how they came out of it. Maybe I have a chance to come out of it as well. Whether it was with relationships, Shaq was very open and honest about his relationships with women and the mistakes that he made. He even said all the relationships that went bad was pretty much his fault. I mean, pretty, pretty, it's probably true. I'm sure any one of those women would have stayed with him if he probably wasn't running the streets and doing stuff, you know, rich athletes do. And so he even said that. Um, so, you know, with that being said, there's a lot of good, good info out there and stuff with the Shaq doc. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and break it down right quick. And and then, uh, you know, I'll give it a Moscow rating, which I'm going to give it the Moscow doc rating. All right. Um, appreciate everybody for showing up. Sometimes when I do the live videos, YouTube doesn't always give out the notifications right away. So definitely appreciate everybody for coming through. Uh, Juan Blaze, definitely. What's up, my brother? How you feeling? Appreciate you for coming on through. All right. Um, so with the Shaq doc, this last uh, episode that came out, um, it was really good. He, he first came out um, in this episode. It started off with him in Miami because the last one uh, was pretty much ended with him being traded. And he was saying how he made Miami a basketball town. And when he came, it was D-Wade, 
second year in the NBA, Dwayne Wade, and he was a good player coming into his own. They did do well uh, that year in the playoffs. Um, he said that normally when he was with the Lakers, after they clinched their spot in the playoffs, Phil Jackson would give him some rest so he could be ready for the playoffs. He said he was telling Van Gundy that, and Van Gundy like, no, nah, no, nah, no. Nah. And uh, he was playing, got hurt in the game against the Pacers. And, uh, you know, he wasn't the same, but he still played in the playoffs, used painkillers, he said. Um, but he wasn't able to be at his best. They lost in the playoffs. So we say the next year, they, you know, Pat Riley was there. And I remember when Pat Riley took over for Van Gundy and all of that. And, you know, that's when D-Wade took the next step, his third year, became an all-star, was really one of the best players in the league by that time. And they had a real veteran squad. And that's when they went to the finals. And Shaq, you know, with Pat Riley as coach and everything going on. But Shaq, he, he said Father Time was catching up with him. He was feeling it. He didn't have it in the finals. And he basically told D Wade, all right, it's time for you to take over. You good enough. You the flash. <laughs> he called him the flash. So Shaq gave him the, the nickname flash. And, you know, they ended up winning. If anybody remembers that finals and uh, they beat the Mavericks. It was looking ugly at first. They were down two games to nothing and then ran off four straight wins. So, um, but that was an older team and things. So the very next year, I remember when they got their championship rings, they got blew out by like 40 points. <laughs> so that team was about to be over with. Shaq had a beef with Pat Riley. And that's one thing I learned about Docs. I, I didn't, I learned about this through this doc. I didn't know they had this, this beef. And so uh, this argument that blew up rather. So Riley was mad at Jay will white chocolate is what they used to call Jason Williams. If y'all remember. And uh, so he was uh, wanting to talk to Jason Williams about some stuff, Matt Shaq being the leader trying to say, no, nah, Jay will, I got it. And he ended up getting it with Riley and they back and forth arguing to the point where they damn near face to face fingers in each other face. And uh, it got to the point where Riley told him to get out and Shaq like, why don't you make me? And they was he said, Shaq even said he was close to putting the hands on him. And uh, it took Alonzo Mourning to come up in between the two of them and uh, <laughs> separate, separate them before something serious happened. He told Shaq, no, don't do it. Just like Street Fighter. <laughs> But uh, it was it was pretty good. They had that little, you know, info in there. And so we learned that happened. And so <laughs> Shaq was leaving and with Uncle Jerome in the car. And he, they drove by the U-Haul place. He said it was a U-Haul place not too far from his house. He would drive by Uncle Jerome like, hey, next time we go by there, you might be needing to pick up some boxes. He said, sure enough. He said the doctors did him wrong. He was in the MRI to sleep, so he know he was still. He was in there for about an hour. They said, oh, he woke up, and he saw them on the phone. And next thing you know, oh, uh, you got to do it again because it didn't go through. He said he felt that was some BS, but next thing you know, he, he getting the text on his phone. He been traded. Shaq said he was about to go inside Miami facility and put some hands on, on Riley, but he said they wouldn't let him in. And Uncle Jerome was telling him, no, nah, don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> so, you know, Shaq about to put them hands on him. Dad, Shaq would have been in jail, under the jail. <laughs> but uh, another thing that uh, Shaq, I didn't know, but I don't really, I'm not, I do talk about, big stories and people personal stuff but only when it becomes big i'm not the type of person that really gets into what another person does in their personal life you know on the regular so it was news to me 
to learn about Shaq's first child that he had with a woman named Arnetta, who was actually his uh, high school sweetheart. He said that he'd known since high school, didn't have the confidence. Now he rich, this, that, and the other. Guy with her had his first child, but doing this, doing that, still messing around. Eventually came into meeting Shawnee, who he said he knew that was the woman he would have the rest of his kids with and who he loved. And he eventually messed that up. And even he says that. And uh, he said, you know, being rich and famous and young in L.A., that didn't help. Ten times worse. Going to Miami, another ten times worse. So, you know, it just he was doing the wrong things. His daughter, his first daughter was talking about how she barely saw him, barely talked to him, saw him once a month if she was lucky. Uh, you know, Shaq was talking about how he got divorced when he was with uh, Phoenix and just so much stuff going on, adding up. He was like he could still do a little something, but could barely do it when he was in Phoenix. Um, start missing layups, <laughs> things you can normally, he could normally do without trying, uh, father time catching up with him. He ended up with, uh, Cleveland with LeBron for a year, averaging like 10 points a game, <laughs> just like another guy playing pretty much damn near. And, uh, you know, 19 years Shaq played in the NBA, 19 years, just like that. And I still can't believe it myself. I remember my first year in high school, my very first year in high school is associated with Shaq to me because I remember he was the rookie that came out, dominant. Everybody was talking about just Shaq, 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 Shaq. So every time I think of that, that go back to my first year in high school so long ago. Um, you know, he was in his 19th year with the Celtics, barely could do anything, and uh, got his, his injured his Achilles. He said when he was there, he knew he was going to probably get a career in an injury, injured his Achilles, and you know what I'm saying, it, it was pretty much over with. He said he was happy because now he know it's over with. It ain't even no more try, you know, this, that, and the other. And, uh, you know, he ended up having a, you know, press conference retired. Uh, he had an option to go to ESPN or TNT. And ESPN was going to build the show around him, move the show to L.A. or move a show to, my, to Orlando, whatever he wanted, because he had a house in either one. They was going to do all this stuff for him and for this show. And uh, TNT was like, we really want you as well. We don't need you. We won't do all of that, but we would love to have you. And so, you know, he made the decision that a lot of people don't understand in life. And I've talked to people a lot, whereas this is the thing. Money is not everything all the time. And so he chose TNT because he said it's about the relationship. They relationship people. He said, I could choose this ESPN in my, you know, worst day at, uh, e at TNT. I mean, my worst day at uh, ESPN to get me fired, you know, but that worst day at TNT, you know, I'll be all right. We'll, we could laugh and have a good time. So, you know, it's it's about just like I talk to some people and they may have a job, for example, just an example, <laughs> but ten dollars an hour. But it's closer and you do less work versus a job that's twelve dollars an hour that you do more work and it's further away. They say, yeah, but I'm making two dollars more an hour. Yeah, but you spend uh, three dollars more going to work let alone you doing more work so now you're more tired wore out spending more to get to work you actually losing money you could have been happier you would have it seemed like you were making less but you actually wasn't and you wasn't as wore out so sometimes people gotta look at all of the positive and negatives 
of the situation, not just the simple dollars and cents. Um, but anyway, um, he ended up choosing TNT, as we know, and he said the 11 years that he'd been there, they didn't won nine Emmys. So he's saying it ain't necessarily all because of him, but the relationship thing. And that's why he chose. And that's a good thing he did, too, because John Skipper, who promised him all that, ended up getting fired from ESPN not too long after that. They didn't say that in the doc, but that's what happened. Um, you know, Shaq. He uh, said that, you know, image is reality. You know, he got that from Dr. Lucille O'Neill, his mama, basically. And that is true. Perception is reality. A person perceive you to be one way. That's what they're going to think of you until, you know, you think of or show them something different. And so, you know, he say it costs nothing to be nice, which is true. And, you know, he when he deals with products, he gets with stuff that he really believe in um, and he gets ownership in the products. I'm sure people have heard he part owner of Papa John's, Krispy Kreme, the general, all of that stuff. So he say when he gets something, he really believe in it. And I mean, you know, he say he in the fun biz. So everything he tried to do and try to be fun. He was the first athlete verified on twitter that's something i didn't know um he was saying that magic basically gave him the business blueprint magic imagine man hey look here man y'all won't go broke man you won't be like magic man <laughs> but gave him the blueprint and uh he said he listened when he was in college he saw that he was in one of the classes and they was asking him about business this that and the other and he was saying he saw jordan with the jump man logo he said, well, he's going to be the Dunk Man logo. And that's when he made the Shaq logo, got it copyrighted, everything. And, uh, you know, he started his own little thing from Jump. Um, you know, people remember he was the face of the league when the league was fun. If you remember uh, in the early 2000s, they had the little fun commercials, kind of like comedic commercials and stuff. That was Shaq. So, you know. He expanded a little bit of what Jordan did with Jordan brand and uh, kind of took it to another level, being on every damn commercial for a minute on TV. So, uh, you know, it, it's pretty good to see what he did. And he gave a bl another blueprint to other players. That's why the LeBrons and all the other people of the world took it to another level. Now LeBron got a production company for film and stuff. I mean, these players get so much money. They could do so much now. Um, hundreds of millions of dollars. I mean, wow. Um, one thing at his Hall of Fame speech, you know, his dad wasn't able to be there. He had an empty seat there for him. Um, he thanked his dad a lot because, you know, he died by the time he was in the Hall of Fame, unfortunately. And uh, one thing he said is, you know, his dad was firm but fair and uh, pretty much guided him and helped him and be the man that he was pretty much. And so uh, I'm seeing a couple of these things loaded. I guess some people may be able to see this later on the replay. But, um, yeah, he, he thanked him. And uh, he said if he did get out of line, he would meet the alter ego, a.k.a. the belt. So, you know, kids, when they're young, don't understand the difference between discipline and abuse. And, you know, so as he was older, he understood the man was keeping him in line, disciplined, and in the end, he was grateful and thankful because it helped him be the man he was. Um, he said that, uh, you know, that his dad died from prostate cancer, never told anybody that he was going through his shack. None of them even knew Shaq. Well, of course, his mama knew, but none of the kids and nobody knew that he was going through that. He said he told them when he had came out and had remission and everything, but that they was at a birthday party. And then uh, he had like a shortness of breath or something at the party and passed out and went to the hospital and never came home from the hospital. Died just like that. And, uh, you know, Shaq's sister was saying how she never seen him cry and this, that, and the other. And, you know, Phil took him from a boy to a man, pretty much, just like the song he said. And uh, 
taught him, like Shaq say, never give up and to work hard. And uh, that's some qualities I try to teach my son as well. And not only by saying it, but by being an example. You know, one reason me personally even have a YouTube channel is my son brought it up. And I would always tell him, never stop learning and never give up. And so I didn't know anything about videos or any of that. But, you know, he was only 10, 11 years old at the time. And he said, you know, what you say about never give up, never stop learning. So. I went and tried to be an example because I don't like to just talk about it. I like to be about it. So, you know, hopefully a lot of these things soak in with, with my shorty and, and he become a productive person in life. Um, but, you know, the when you see things like this, it is reassuring to see. And then hopefully the things that you tried to instill in your children or in uh, people instilled in you pays off. Um, so, you know, um, he said one thing that his pops taught him about, you know, pretty much the sport is if there's a discussion about whether you this or that, then you ain't as good as you thought you was. Cause it should be hands down, no discussion. So, you know, Shaq, he tried to do that with his career to be the hands down best big man, in the game i don't know he's up there definitely um one thing he said after his pops died which is kind of unfortunate that it had to wait this long but his mom told him to reach out to his real dad and so he ended up meeting his real dad he said that he ended up buying him a car took him out bought him a car and uh told him look man when i was young yeah i was mad but i ain't mad uh, I got no hard feelings. And it's something that you do understand. And it's some things it's similar to some conversations that I've had with my parents um, as an older man. Um, and he said, you know, I understand because he's gotten older and done things and made mistakes. So he can understand how when his father was young and did things and made mistakes, you know, nobody's perfect. And, you know, he understood people do dumb things. Um, as Shaq had a relationship and wasn't really there like he should have been for his daughter. So he could understand how something can happen with, you know what I mean? You just get an understanding that things happen sometimes. You don't necessarily want that to happen. And, uh, you know, things get out of control. And next thing you know, time is flying. <laughs> and next is over. Um, one of the things that he said is that he got sleeping problems. He said he can't sleep because ever since Kobe died and his sister, his baby sister just died recently from cancer. He said when his son came in and told him that Kobe died, he thought it was some bull. He ain't believe it. And then he was like, one of the things he had is he was like, he had the regret, should have reached out, should have talked to him. Same with his sister, um, you know, should have talked to her, should have did more all this time in life, you know, never took her to Paris, never took her to London, never did these things, um, things that he could have, but you end up being so busy with things in life um, that next thing you know, it, time's up. And so that's one thing I always try to stress to people. And when I talk to them and stuff is enjoy the little things. And uh, take advantage of the time while you got it, because you never know what may happen and what's going on. And, uh, you know, and nothing worse than having a bunch of regrets. It could have, should have, would have. Um, his sister, another person that had cancer, didn't tell him. He, he knew that she had cancer, but he didn't know it was terminal, he said. And uh, that broke his heart that she died of cancer. Um, it's just, you know, a lot. Same with Kobe, should have reached out more. Say, he said whenever he see a Kobe highlight on social media, he like done for the day. It like hurts him. And so, uh, you know, a lot of stuff, man. As you, you get older, you start to have thoughts and regrets and things in life. I remember when I was young, 
and older people would tell me that and I would be thinking I'm going to make these decisions and this and that. So I don't have regrets. I'm going to try to always make the right decision. I always I actually thought that. And I still try to do that. I tried to do it then. I still try to do it today. And I may not have made as many wrong decisions as some, but I definitely made some wrong decisions and mistakes in life. I mean, that's just life. I don't think it's anybody walking that hasn't. Um, and so, you know, it's just, you know, it's just hard. We got to try to make the most of it, you know. Um, one thing Shaq was saying is, uh, you know, from 13 to 39, all he knew was hoops, the crowd, the cheers, the adrenaline, and then it was all over. And now he got to figure out something else. He said, now he a DJ. <laughs> and because, uh, uh, you know, when he retired, he ain't hear nothing. No more adrenaline crowd, nothing. But he said when he do the DJing, he could be at events. And it's so big, it's like a championship parade. And he could do that once a month or whatever, and he good. So Shaq DJ now. I don't know how many people know that Shaq was a DJ. I didn't know that. I think I did hear he was doing it, but I didn't know he was doing it like once a month consistently. So I don't know. Shaq DJing out there. But, uh, you know, it, it's good to be versatile in life, to don't be afraid to try new things, and more importantly, have fun. Don't stress about bills and stuff all the time because, you know, bills will always be there. But today won't. You know what I mean? Once today is gone, it's gone. So enjoy it. And I'm not saying don't pay bills or this or that, but don't let that stress you out and ruin your day. You know, you can figure out ways and what to do, this, that, and the other, and address problems, but... Try not to let stuff steal your joy in life because it's just, you know, it's hard to come by. And uh, that's what Shaq said about his legacy when they asked him, what would you want your legacy to be? And he said he want his legacy to be known as being a nice guy, which I guess ain't nothing wrong with that. You know, uh, he say when people talk about him, he would love for people to think about Oh, he said this or that and was cool. Or he signed this and that. He was cool. Or when I was here, he did this and that. That was cool. He was a nice guy, man. He was a good dude. And you know what? It's a lot of people in his position with money and stuff that he got that you cannot say that about. So, you know, that's a good thing. Um, because, unfortunately... It's a lot of people you can't say that about and to be blessed with so much and uh, have access to so much and uh, don't do that, you know, and then he broke it down. You know, Dion Cole from Chicago, man, I, of course, I'm from Chicago, so I'm biased, but I think Chicago comedians are the funniest comedians out there and and the realists to say some real stuff, boy. And he said, Dion Cole said, how many of y'all, he said in one of his little jokes, he was like, I mean, where the 40 year olds at? And everybody was like, ah, whatever. In the crowd, he was like, yeah, y'all on deck. Y'all got about 20 summers left. 20 summers left. And Shaq like, damn, think about it. He right. I got like 20 summers left and Shaq 50. He likes in 20 years, Lord willing. He ain't say the Lord willing. I'm saying that, but in 20 years, be 70. Still can't be doing stuff you was doing at 70 that you did at 40 or 50. And at 40 and 50, you can't do what you was doing at 20 or 30. So it is levels in life. And just think you got 20 summers left. What you gonna do with it? What you gonna what you gonna make the most of? And that's you'll be 70, 60. You know, so you gotta break it down like that. I remember when I was about 25 to 28, and I planned out, okay, I'm gonna try to do this, that, and the other. By the time I'm this age, 40, 42. 44, you know, whatever, 45 at the latest, 
I could be retired. I planned on getting into real estate. Now, of course, different things happen. Didn't work out. I did start and have some things. So that has benefited me, but it didn't get to where I wanted to do even close and things. So, but had it done it, I would have been happy, <laughs> of course. But, uh, you know, I was looking at it like, man, I wanted to be done by 40 so I could retire and just enjoy, you know, live off of whatever and enjoy those 20, 30 summers I would have left at that point. I didn't want to work to 50, 60, 70 like they want us to do. And then what? Retire for the last 10 years. So got to make the most of it, man. You know, Shaq 50. 50 years old, man. One thing he said is that all he, he remembers everybody that was there for him. He remember when he couldn't play it and nobody, he couldn't make the team. It took that one coach to say, yeah, I'm going to take you and I'm going to work with you, um, you know, and believed in him. He was 13 years old, six foot nine, couldn't even dunk, you know. So it's just so much. Uh, they never forget that. Never forget the people that was there for you in life. You never know. It's a lot of people that I've helped or been kind to show this and that, and they'll forget they even know you or that you even done something. Now, then that's a lack of, that shows something on their character, lack of their character and on them. But at the same time, if you a real person out there in life, never forget those that was real with you helped you looked out for you um because you know that's what real do and appreciate and when other people that you have helped they'll come back and do that you'll see why it's good to give that respect and appreciation you know so the last thing i'm gonna say shack is crazy talking about when he all said and done he gonna go live in the old folks home he say he gonna have a you know pool there, this, that, and the other. <laughs> but he say I'm gonna go out and live in the old folks' home. I don't want my kids and nobody thinking they gotta do this or that. I'm gonna go ahead and live in the old folks' home, and then I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Who want to change Shaq's diaper? Big Shaq duty diaper. <laughs> I got boo boo. I got boo boo. You got to turn Shaq over. Boo-boo. Boo-boo. They call him me Shaq. I got the big Aristotle dump. The big fundamental. <laughs> so, you know, definitely Shaq crazy. I wouldn't be going to the old folks' home. He should be making all them damn people take care of him. How many people he took care of in life? Uh, yeah, it's y'all turn now. Nah, you only got a couple years and I'm out. <laughs> uh, but, you know, it is what it is. Shaq, funny, man. I doubt when it come down to it, he about to go in no damn old folks home. Change my diaper. Boo-boo diaper. Do the <laughs> time for the Moscow. All right, the most go for simple categories, 25 points each for each category, giving you a total of a 100. But for docs, documentaries, I take out two categories, category one, visuals and cinematography. It's no special effects and stuff, as well as, uh, well, visual, special effects and makeup, costumes, number three, visual cinematography. They're not really going around and doing a lot of stuff with special camera work. So uh, storyline and plot for episode four was excellent. I love the knowledge and the gems and things that Shaq says about his mother, his father, his family, friends, mistakes that made and things of that nature. Um, so I would give that storyline and plot um, on the scale because I rolled the other scores in, into just two categories. I would give number two a score of uh, out of 50. 
I would give it a 45. That's how good uh, the plot and storyline is for the episode. Entertainment fun factor, I'm going to give a 45 as well, bringing the Mosco total to a 90 and definitely an excellent, excellent documentary to watch overall. Check it out. Um, AJ, you say, can I ask a question regarding one of your videos? Yeah, definitely. What's the, what's the question? And then I'm getting ready to get up out of here. So anybody, uh, let me know what you think about this Shaq documentary in the comments. Uh, definitely appreciate it. I enjoyed it. It was a very good four-part documentary, something to watch while all the shows that we normally watch are off the air. All right. Um, with that being said, we about to call it a night. I'm about to wrap it up. AJ, I guess, is gone with the question. So, everybody, I appreciate all your time. Appreciate y'all for watching. Don't forget to hit that like, bang that bell, and that Shaq say, you will be dead, boy, and I'm out. Little <laughs> boy, Kobe. Kobe, head boy. Little second boy, the dog boy, the twin boy, third boy, four boy. Would you give me the ball, Kobe? It's all Kobe. <laughs> Juan Blaze, my brother, you say uh, you like it so far. Got to finish it, though. I know that's what's up. I'm going to let you go ahead and catch up, finish it. Uh, We're going to have to hook up in Discord and uh, talk about some of this stuff. And, uh, you know, everybody appreciate y'all for watching. See y'all on the next one. Deuces. And uh, I'm up out of here.